Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the Habit Trail OVO Dwarf Hamster Habitat. And this is a habitat that's designed specifically for dwarf hamsters, just like it says. Those are the small species of hamsters, including rovos. There's some interesting information on the package. For example, did you know that hamsters are naturally scared of open spaces? I didn't know that. It also shows some examples of natural habitat dens where hamsters would have lived and that kind of inspired the design of this habit trail system. I don't know about all that, but I'm just sharing with you that that's what's on the box. And what we're looking at is a pile of pieces. And the reason that I'm doing this video is some people are really intimidated by all the pieces and parts and how they go together. They have nice instructions, but I'm going to walk you through it. They have these locking rings, and I recommend if you buy anything extra that you pick up a few extra locking rings, just in case you need some more to change the configurations. This is a close-up of how it works when it turns nice and easy like this. That's the open position, and you want to put it on one of your fittings. In this case, we're using one of the straight fittings. And then when you twist it, it locks in place, so it actually clamps and shrinks onto the uh, fitting that you're going to put together. So these things work really well, in fact, better than some of the other uh, cage designs that I've had over the years. Listen to the noise on this uh, wheel. It's kind of squeaky, so as I always recommend, don't forget to put some olive oil on the axles so that it sounds nice and uh, moves freely. Looking at the tees here and all the components that we're going to put together, I'm going to walk you through this thing step by step and show you how to put it all together. These are those oddball drinking systems that come with these and several of the other habit trail systems. You just give it a twist, comes apart, you pull off this uh, metal piece here, and uh, that's how you fill it, clean it out, make sure that this little hole is not obstructed, put it back, snap it in place, turn it over, and shake it out until it stops dripping, of course. We don't want water inside our cages or in the run. And then you just latch those little divots in the receiver there, and it's good to go. And this is what it looks like if you were a hamster looking up to drink from it. So these are straightforward, and again, they use these on a lot of their systems. So step one, let's go ahead and put in these little side receivers. They clip into those uh, holes in the bottom, and there's little ears that go into the side there that'll be evident when you look at the way it's shaped. They just clip right in, and then we go to what's called their feeder and the hideaway. And it also supports, of course, the exercise wheel. So the feed goes in the top. And if you look around the side here, there's that little opening. So it is a hideaway for them. And it's opaque, so it's nice and dark in there. I've seen some that are transparent. I don't think that makes the hamster feel very secure. If they're in the open and light passes through, I think they like dark areas. Plus, you can see that the basin here is nice and deep for some deep litter. I think that litter is going to interact. Uh, some people did ask on the last video that I did what the diameter of the exercise wheel was. So it's a little over seven inches in diameter. Um, we're going to be keeping dwarf hamsters, so they're going to be small. Now this shows the locking system for the top, the dome part that opens and closes, and you can see it's full of perforated holes here. And uh, the little silver rings are the locking system. And you can pull it open from the back or the front. And then when you put this in the locked position, it's secure. And again, we'll lock that side. And that's how it's going to be when uh, it's locked up and you want to keep your pet safe from escape. You can pull it again up from the front or up from the back, depending on whether you're reaching in to pick up your hamster or you want to rearrange things or if you want to attend to the food dish, which is here in the back. So pretty easy. Everything is completely accessible. You can reach in kind of from the sides. So pretty straightforward. Now we have the tea. I'm going to walk you through, as I said, step by step to make it look just the way it does on the cover of the box. Here's the locking ring. Leave them in the unlocked position until you push two pieces together and then twist that ring and lock it up. So we have the water bottle on the end. We have a tea and then we're connected there to the side. Now we have a little nesting area or a petting area, whatever your hamster chooses to use this for. And the pieces just clip together. It of course opens and closes so you can access your pet when it's in this little component. And this of course is going to connect over on the other side, has a white base. I'm going to show you how it connects in here. It just slides in, there's a little groove and then the movable part of the dome clips down and it's secure so that your pet can't escape through there. And again, there's more vent holes and stuff. These components don't fit together airtight. So your 
hamster is going to be able to breathe probably okay through these other parts. And then you'll just connect that on there. Now this part is what they call the travel part. So you're supposed to be able to disconnect this and carry your pet with you if you have to take it somewhere. I don't know if I'm going to use it for that, but I'm definitely going to show you how it goes together because it seems to trouble some people when they're trying to figure out how all these parts go together. So the semi-translucent part goes on first in the back and it has little clips that go into the white component. Then the movable part of the dome just clips over the top of the two sides. And it has that little OVO locking device right on the front there and again lots of holes in it. Now we're going to clip on the handle. When you push that on, you'll see that there's a little ring here that when you push down tight, it'll clip in securely and it really doesn't swing on the handle so that handle will be in a fixed position and you can carry it around, I guess. And there it is. So that's all together. So we have uh, pretty much the side components are done. Again, they show you the layout here. It's probably best to look at this, but you can, you can change it up. You don't have to follow exactly the way they have it laid out. But this is the setup I'm going to do for demonstration purposes. So here we are. We have the two T's on both sides here. The locking rings are in place. And I'm just going to add everything. So now we have the little petting nesting site on the left there. And don't forget we have the drinker on the right. Now we have the two vertical tubes. Notice that those vertical tubes are full of holes. So these connected pieces and these tubes are small for dwarfs and they're ventilated throughout. And then we have the 90 degree elbows here on the top. Then we have two more T's and the tops of those T's, you can add accessories to that or you can close them off with the windows that are included. And then of course we have the little transporter which is also kind of an upper nesting area. And now I'm putting on the windows on the end here and at the top of each T. So this pretty much is the entire system. So you have a central basin that has your exercise wheel, food, and it has the hideaway. And of course, it's an area where you can put a bunch of bedding. You don't have to put bedding in all the little small compartments, including the carry apartment at the top, because your hamster is going to haul that stuff around on their own. Now you're probably disappointed because I'm not going to show a hamster in it yet. What I'm trying to show is just uh, what comes with the kit and how it goes together and how it's going to look when it's finished. We definitely don't want you buying a hamster or a pet that's going to go in these habitats until after everything is set up and secure, you've picked a good spot for it, and you have the bedding and food and everything you need. Now I'm just showing you the dimensions, the height here, and of course the length. And these are in inches. So it's almost, you know, this thing's like 29, 30 inches long. So it's pretty big. Make sure you have space for it and I highly recommend, as I'm going to do, that you connect this to other Habitrail habitats. So what I'm doing is I'm showing individual videos that show you each habitat and what parts come with it and how it goes together. But in the end, if you keep watching my videos, you're going to see all of these components, all of these habitats together in one little dwarf hamster village. And in the very end, of course, we'll be adding the hamsters. So I hope you like it. I mean, this is uh, the habitat that Habitrail actually makes specifically for dwarf hamsters. If you've got one, I'd love to read your comments down below. Again, I probably don't think it's good enough for a standalone. Let's uh, connect these to a bunch of other habitats and see what kind of village we can come up with. Thanks for watching.